This week, Conflict Zone is in London, where I caught up with one of Europe's best-known and shortest-serving politicians. He's Yanis Varoufakis, who was Greece's finance minister during the recent turbulent debt negotiations. He ended up being sidelined by his own government, seen by many as an obstacle to getting an agreement. Did he ultimately do more harm than good? Yanis Varoufakis, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. It's a few weeks now since Greece signed the third bailout in five years, which you called capitulation. You said you've been set up, variously described it as blackmail. But the European public isn't buying that, is it? Still blames you and your government for the debt crisis. Why are you not getting that message across? It's not the sensation I have when I walk on the streets of Paris, Berlin, Rome. Uh, indeed, I get exactly the opposite view. Ipsos Mori view poll. That Ipsos Mori poll across mm -hmm. nine European countries, August the 28th, shows mm -hmm. that some 88% say the Greek government is a great deal or a fair amount to blame for the crisis. Those are high figures, aren't they? Pretty much so. Uh, and if I were asked in August, I would probably have to say the same thing, that we are culpable in the sense that we did not maintain a firm position that we should have maintained. So, you know how polls are. Um, you broke your promise. We did broke, break our prom promise because there was only one promise, that we're not going to further extend and pretend. Extend the crisis to the future by accepting another loan which we will add on existing unsustainable debt and pretend that we solve the crisis. And I'm very the promise much afraid. was not to cross your red lines, which you wrote about in February in the New York Times. But that, that was the main red line. We, wouldn't dis we would desist from doing anything that was against Greece's interests. That's what you wrote. And then you signed an agreement that I you didn't. now say is right against. Tim, I didn't. I resigned on the night when it was apparent to me. But you were speaking on behalf of the government I was, at that point. I was. And when the government... So there's collective responsibility. Indeed. And, and when the government uh, um, clearly was uh, of a mind to violate that commitment, which I wrote about and I spoke about back in January, February, March, I designed. What else can a politician do? I want to come on to that a bit later, but let's, let's go back to that first Eurogroup meeting. You mm -hmm. said to them, we hear your concerns about us mm -hmm. and we need to put them to rest. Indeed. But you never did, did you? I think we did. If you look, for instance, at the proposals that I table, tabled at the Eurogroup regarding reforms, regarding the sustainability of our fiscal position, regarding restructuring without any haircuts and in a manner that maximized the value that our creditors would get back from us. These were very sensible, very moderate proposals that indeed were not even left-wing. It was just common sense. Once uh, I was told that they resembled something that a bankruptcy lawyer from Wall Street with a small reformist agenda would put forward. You said they were sensible. One Troika official said the ease with which you requested other European taxpayers to settle your debts had an undemocratic air about it. Yes, but that is subterfuge on their behalf. Because what they're doing now is they are guaranteeing, they are making the absolute certain why would that they engage our creditors in subterfuge? are not going to get, get their Why money back. Why would they engage in subterfuge? Well, Why? I mean, you and I know that human nature has a certain reluctance to admit failure. The Troika has been imposing a reform agenda, in inverted commas, a reform agenda, for five years upon Greece that has made Greece unreformable and has uh, deepened the debt deflation recycle, which ensures the that the, the creditors will the never get their money. The Financial Times took, took issue with you on that. It said your country had achieved much since receiving the bailout loans, mm -hmm. reducing the budget deficit from 15% of national income in 2009 to 3% in 2014. Well, actually, it's better than that. And I've been advocating that. I've said we so, are the so champions the of austerity. So the bailout loans, rather than being the cause of all your woes, you did quite well under Tim, the bailout Tim. loans. No, not in the slightest. Listen, hear this. The the, the consolidation is a means to an end. It's not the end in itself. What does you that cut, mean? What well, does that, what does that you mean? cut expenditure in order to achieve an aim, which is 
to, 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 to render your debt sustainable. Yeah, but let, so, let, let, me, just, no, 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 no. Let, let me just bring this down to, to the essence. The they essence say, is, the, the, essence the financial is that our Times, debt, the our financial Times said you did quite well under the previous bailouts. No, hang on in second. the third quarter of 2014, the Greek said, output said. growth topped the Eurozone League okay. table. You were doing quite well. You said it's the cause of all your ills, Well, the other bailouts you had, and they're taking issue with you on that. Okay, allow me to answer these two very important points. Firstly, it is true that the governments from 2010-11 on to 2004, 14, did turn Greece into the champion of austerity. We cut massively. We turned, and this was a, a magnificent turnaround, we turned a huge budget deficit into the, into the largest structural surplus in Europe. That is a success. That was a success. But hang on a second. This is a and success. you wanted to reverse no, 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 it. No, 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 no. Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. Allow me to complete my sentence. This was the instrument that we used to achieve a target. Which is, the target was what? The target was not to have a surplus in the budget. The target was to start growing the economy again and to make the debt sustainable. The result, By however, reversing was spending cuts wait, 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 and wait. tax increases, Tim, Tim, backtracking on let economic reforms. Let me finish. Greek GDP fell precipitously and our debt skyrocketed. The whole point of the austerity was to make the debt sustainable. Our debt, when we started in 2010, was 120% of GDP. Now it's almost 200%. That's a spectacular failure of this program. You faced so the austerity failed. You faced a lighter payment burden than Italy, Spain, and Portugal. Klaus Regeling, who's the head of the European Financial Stability Verse mm -hmm. Facility, he said Greece has already received by far the most generous lending conditions ever granted to bailout countries. But okay. It wasn't good enough for All right. you. Do, you. do you now care for the truth? Because the truth is... Because he lied, did he? Uh, well, let's say he was economical with it, with the truth. Let me that's, tell you what the truth a, is. That's, that's a powerful statement. Oh, He's yes. a senior I'm, figure. He wasn't the only one to you say You didn't it. invite me on your program to give you powerless statements, did you? <laughs> so allow me to I continue. wanted the truth. Yes, well, the truth is this. The truth is that in 2010, the Greek state was bankrupt. And Europe, in its infinite wisdom, decided to hide that bankruptcy, to pretend that it was not a case of bankruptcy, but it was a case of lack of liquidity. And it tried to pretend that we were not bankrupt by granting us the largest loan in economic history, 110 billion first and then another 120, on condition of austerity that shrunk our income uh, from which we had to repay the old loans and the new loans. But nevertheless now, reduced Tim, you your can budget deficit. That, that, was a, uh, that ne would never end well. But nevertheless reduced your budget deficit from 15%. Yes, but the to, budget deficit to, to is the instrument. You judge okay. a right. program on the basis of its outcome, not on the basis of the instrument. The outcome was a catastrophe. The reason so, why they had to give us the, as Klaus Reckling said, debt relief was because our debt was completely unsustainable as a result of the failure of the program. So you, uh, you, you made these arguments. You made these arguments countless times. To the and Euro they have zone. been did you, completely did you, and utterly accepted by anyone who has any sense of economic logic, like well, the International Monetary Fund well, has agreed with me. 12 countries, uh, which the you, International which you did, Monetary 12, 12 Fund countries has agreed are with poorer me. than you in the EU. Uh, you, didn't seem to, you didn't seem to worry about that. Ah, uh, yes, so, uh, excuse me. According to World Bank per capita you, 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 gross no, national income figures. My, my statement in the Eurogroup always, when I addressed my Slova Slovak colleague, my Slovenian colleague, was that what we are tabling here in front of you is a recommendation, a proposal, which if, if you accept, your uh, uh, receipts from us, our repayments to you, are going to be maximized. Yeah, but they didn't buy that. Listen, listen to yes, what... Yeah, listen, the, the result what? is they are going to get nothing back because they are imposing a program upon Greece which will ensure they will not get their money back. Former Latvian Prime Minister Valdis Dombrovskis said... No one says Greece has to leave the EU, but people feel humiliated. And in many countries, people don't care about Greece anymore. It's hard for me, if I'm prime minister, to explain why we poor should help the rich Greeks. The Greeks can do their reforms if they want to, but not with our money. That was the response. Well, you said that you said they were buying Tim, your arguments. Clearly, Tim. they weren't, were they? Well, I said that the IMF, I said, did you hear what I said? I said, anybody who has any sense of economic logic bought our arguments. And that... That's pretty insulting. Include... That, that's pretty insulting it's to a former factual. prime minister. It is factual. It's factual. So let you're me, the only person let me who knew the truth here. Well, not the and only person. And they didn't. The International Monetary Fund are they the experts nothing. on debt sustainability, and they agree with me. 
Former Lithuanian officials said the, there's general the resentment here all the time The Treasury of the United this. States of America agrees with me. Every expert America on this planet... America likes a hard luck story, doesn't it? You may say this, I couldn't possibly comment. But what I can comment and upon you, is this. And you milked it in America for Tim, all it was worth. What is the Greek debt to GDP ratio today? It's to almost edging towards 200%. Clearly, going from 120% when we had the debt crisis to 200% is not a success story. The point I've been making in the Eurogroup is, if you insist on striking the cow that is to produce the milk, you're going to kill it and not get the milk. Okay, in order I, to get more milk so that you get repaid, I, 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 I you understand. have to agree with us that we need to have a sensible, a sensible policy towards primary surpluses and debt so that you can get more money I, back. I, I understand the arguments, but they apparently They didn't. are the only sensible if, arguments if, around the table. Well, okay, so you accuse a lot of people of having non-sensible arguments. Yes, I do. You, you, you said you were set up. If the fix was in, if you were set up, mm -hmm. why did they waste so much time on all these discussions with you? Day after day, night after night, week after mm -hmm. week, month after month. They had better they things to do. They had us. crises to do, well, crises to manage. They had migrants. They had Russia and Ukraine. They had plenty of things I on their I wish they had agenda. spent some energy on the migrant issue. They spent none of it. And this is a great disgrace for uh, the European Union and a great uh, honor for the G German government that in the last few days they've shown some leadership on this matter. Did Unfortunately, we have a monetary union which is unsustainable. Did you, did the you Greek crisis, Greece was the canary in the mine, and Europe was in denial of the architectural fault lines within the Eurozone. Greece is, is just a col collateral right. damage to them. Okay. It was just a pawn in, on a larger okay, chessboard. The you, great you, tussle you, is between Paris and Berlin you, you at keep, the moment. You keep making that point. Did you, did you well, ever lie? This is the first you, time I made this point in your program. A similar point. <laughs> did you ever lie during the negotiations? No. Did you ever mislead? No. But I was lied to and I was misled my, by my interlocutors. When you flew... On a very large flew, number of occasions. When you flew to the IMF in mm -hmm. Washington on Easter Sunday... Yes. ...to see Christine Lagarde and yes. to try and get more flexible payment terms... Yes. ...you said very carefully and the New York Times spoke to people who were close to you, mm -hmm. you said that Greece would intend, intended to meet its payment obligations. Mm -hmm. You said to people close to you that you had deliberately used the word intend instead of will, despite the fact that people would take that as a commitment. Not were the you slightest. intentionally misleading? Not in the slightest. I spent two and a half hours with Christine Lagarde in her office. We had a very pleasant conversation, a very frank exchange, and in that I explained the difference. Our intention was indeed to meet our obligations to the IMF and to all the creditors. But by then you knew you Hang wouldn't. on a second, team. Let me finish my, my sentence. Our intention was to do that. This is what we wanted to do it. But there's a fundamental profound difference between desire and capacity. We will, our finances were being depleted. So Every you knew you wouldn't meet those obligations? I knew, knew that there was going to be a point in time when we would no longer be able to afford it. So why just why come out with the, the phrase intend to meet because its, its obligations? Correct. Because it was completely, utterly realistic to say that we intended to and we were asking for it their support. It created the false impression, Not in the slightest. It? Not in because the people thought, oh yes, Christine Greece is Lagarde, going to meet its obligations. Well, this is what I said to Christine Lagarde, and Christine Lagarde knew exactly what I meant. And she agreed with me. Because you know what? The moment I became finance minister, just even before I had become fin fin finance minister, there was a bank run, a slow-burning bank run happening in Greece, and the stock exchange was collapsing. The first thing I did was to come to London, here where we are now, mm -hmm. and I spoke to more than 200 investors. And the next morning, the stock exchange of Greece and bank shares uh, went up by 10, between 10 and 20 percent. The okay. following day, the day after that, the Central Bank of Europe, instead of supporting me in my efforts, pulled the, the, the rag from under I, my I, legs I, I with, understand. with a I, waiver. I was asking you about will or intend to. Well, don't you understand? Is it so hard to understand the difference between saying, I want to pay you back, people, but I'm not sure that I will manage people it? People took it Is it differently. People well, took it differently. I'm sorry, but I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'm right. perfectly clear in the use of, of English. I want to... When I, I, our, you know, we are a very proud people. We want to meet all our, 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 our obligations to all our creditors. That doesn't mean we can afford it. And what we are we're asking of our partners and the International Monetary Fund and the ECB and the Commission 
was for an, uh, an opportunity understand. to be able to produce the wealth that is necessary for us to meet enormous right. obligations as a, as accumulated a, yeah, over many Farofakis. years of mismanagement by the Eurozone and by okay. previous Greek governments. Yanis Varoufakis, as a proud man, why did you say you would wear the creditors loathing with pride? Because Why? the creditors, in the case of the Eurozone in Greece, have done something that will go down in history as despicable. But why make it personal? Why make it personal well, between you and them? Because they made it personal. Because they leaked awful stories which were untrue about what was said to me in Riga. Because various uh, comments were made, even in my presence in the Eurogroup, which were uh, bad form, let's say. And I never retaliated on those occasions. You didn't? Never. You enjoyed sticking it never. to them. You told the Italians their debt was unsustainable. That you is not true. This is another case of, you never said of that exceptionally, to them. exceptional distortion on the part of the press. I had made that statement in December 2010 in an interview, and I was completely correct, as history proved, to say that the Greek crisis would bring Italy down unless and until the ECB acted. Okay, you, it's you, exactly what happened. You, and then when I became finance minister, listen to this team, because you can't just throw this into the mix and expect me to let you get away with it. And then what the press did in Italy was to retrieve something I said in 2010 and pretend I said it in 2015. Okay, you okay. never lectured or hectored? Your colleagues Absolutely in the Absolutely not, but I can tell you what I did. But a lot of and people I'm exceptionally said you did. proud of what I did. A lot of people said you did. Well, a lot of people said you were the key bring them obstacle. Here so that they you can actually the confront me. To, I need to confront to my accusers team. But let but me you say, did. Day after well, let day, me tell you what I you did. You confronted say. them. Day let, after me tell, day. let me tell you what I said to them. What I, there was a question from Wolfgang Schäuble, if, I'm correct, if, I, if I remember correctly. And he said to me, You don't like the idea of a 4.5% pr uh, primary surplus for Greece. What would you want the primary surplus to be? And I said, to give you a firm answer as to what it should be, I should, we should also discuss the degree of debt restructuring and also the investment plan and credit plan we have for the okay. non-performing loans of the, of, of the banks, mm -hmm. because this is like a system of equations in a number of unknowns. You can't fix one without fixing the other. And then you know what I was accused of? Of lecturing them on macroeconomics. Okay. It is actually a testimony to the lack of sophistication of the Eurogroup, that a finance minister is accused of talking economics in the Eurogroup. Okay. I think that the, the citizens of Europe should know about they're that. They're sophisticated. They've lost their hold on economics. There was never any serious not, discussion they're not, about economics. They're not, they're not, Tim, they're not logical. There was never any serious discussion about on economics or macroeconomics in the Eurogroup. That is something that the citizens of Europe should know about. And this is something that they should be very worried about. Well, that's not, the, re that's not the reports they were getting from the people who spoke out time and time again. Respected people. According to you, everybody's been lying Bring about somebody what, here in about front of what me. took place except Bring you. Bring somebody here in front it's of me. It's not credible, Yanis Varoufakis, well, that everybody has lied about this except you. Well, That's stretching you are, credibility, you are, you, isn't you, it? You, you are interviewing me. I can only tell you what I experienced. I experienced a Eurogroup in which the degree of sophistication of the economic narrative was next to zero. And when I tried, because I was representing a country that was suffering from a humanitarian crisis as a result of macroeconomic mismanagement, I tried to bring to the conversation sophisticated macroeconomic, not very sophisticated. Okay, but they didn't think much of the so work that you did either. One Troika representative said the stuff they sent us was extraordinarily naive. In March, you were said to have submitted a proposal Not aimed more at boosting... Than what they were giving us. In and March, you know can, I, can I just finish the question? Yes, I mean, please. I let you finish the answer. Please. In March, you were said to have submitted a proposal aimed at boosting sales tax compliance, which involved hiring amateur spies, sometimes tourists who'd be trained to wear hidden cameras. The Troika representative said it was stunning to see something like this from an EU finance minister. Well, let me... They were stunned. Let, OK, let me now the lack of present exactly the same... Well, I'm sorry, but this is, this is something that leaves me completely unabashed because I can say this to you. In the summer of 2014, according to my own ministry sources, the tourist arrivals in, on the island of Mykonos and the island of Santorini doubled. Hmm? Doubled. Doubled tourism. And our VAT tax take went down by 30%. Immediately you realize that there is a scandalous failure of the tax collection system. I rang up the tax office and I tried to 
find out why that failure took place. And they told me that they have no tax collectors on these islands. And the moment a tax collector boards a ship in Piraeus to go to these islands, suddenly alarm bells ring all over the place and their work is completely annulled. Okay, so I want, I want so to just move I, on. My quickly. proposal, yeah. hang on a second, my proposal that we hire uh, on the basis of short term contracts. I didn't mention tourists. I mentioned tourists as well, but anybody, I okay. said but anyone. You, but you reject the who criticism. Would, who would you actually the criticism. help the surveillance systems of restaurants and pubs and bars where there was rampant tax evasion? I'm very proud of that suggestion. It, ha it happens in America all the time. Why shouldn't it happen? If the IRS does it, why can't we do it? If, if you were so hated, as you said you were. I wasn't hated. Well, you said you wore their loathing with pride. So, I, so you knew that people had strong feelings about you. Well, hadn't you come to the point, the same hadn't you come to the point where it was impossible to do your job on behalf of Greece? If you were the impediment, if it was personal against you, and you say mm -hmm. they made it personal, shouldn't you have stepped down then? Tim, when you let, knew me, that? let me uh, reverse the tables here by asking you a question. What happened when I left? Was there a viable agreement? No, there was an agreement. But the Prime Minister, my Prime Minister, also my successor, my good friend Euclid Sakalotos, who signed that agreement, came to Parliament and said this is a non-viable agreement. If my well, presence in the Europe... it's going to take Greece forward and, the, we'll, and we'll the only thing I impeded, financial stability. The only thing I impeded was a non-viable agreement. Okay. What I was doing in the Europe was I was saying to them, I shall not sign another extend and pretend agreement. This time around, I'm not going to do what my predecessors did, which was to accept another huge wad of money when I cannot guarantee to my creditors, to the people of Slovakia, of Slovenia, right. of Lithuania, that I can repay them the money. But and they loathe me because I was not going to take another predatory but loan, but, which but they your, knew that I, we would not be able but, to repay. But your, but your government did. And, and that is a disgrace. And this is why I wasn't part of it, and I resigned. And why, following the referendum, which gave you the no vote that you wanted, yes. why did you squander that? Why? Why was I it didn't squandered? squander that. You said it was squandered. It was squandered. By the government. Passive tense and active tense what are not the same. What would you have done differently? Well, Tim, let me point. just answer the, the question. On the night of the, of the referendum. Well, but what would you have done differently? I'll tell you. But first, let me ask you to answer the first question. The first question is what happened on the night of the referendum? I found out that our government, that the Prime Minister, uh, were dejected by the no vote, which we had called the Greeks to give us, yeah. and turned it into a no, and therefore I resigned. What would I have done differently? We would not have reached that point if my recommendations had been heard, because from April onwards I was arguing that it is essential that Greece presents its own MOU. But you said a no vote would strengthen your bargaining position. Yes provided we but still wanted to bargain. But it didn't. Did because it? we didn't want to bargain after that. My Prime Minister decided to surrender on the night of the referendum. So in a sense, I feel very um, complicit in having called the Greeks to vote no and then turned that into a yes without using the power and the energy that the courageous Greek voters gave us with this astonishing 62% who voted for the no. And then we just threw it in the bin. Your government, Yanis, Varoufakis broke yes. several key promises. When you look back on your time as a minister, did mm -hmm. you do more harm than good? Absolutely not. What we did was... Your negotiation we... cost Greece quite a bit of money, didn't it? Well, According to one EU official, an extra 30 billion. Well, this is all rubbish. The uh, this is just the, the same terrible arithmetic that, that yeah, led Greece also, to be... You also acknowledged that the bill was going up at the time that you were negotiating. Yes, but whose fault the was that? Was going, whose but, fault was that? We were being asphyxiated. You're continuing to negotiate and not come up with what, what they the, saw what was the alternative? as realistic proposals. Tim, what was, I'm they sorry, didn't see them the as only realistic. proposals, okay, maybe our proposals were not uh, written by God and his angels. Maybe they could have been better. We had no proposals from the Troika. The first proposal that came to us from the Troika came to us on the 25th of June. We, were, we kept putting proposals to them. Why can't we agree to pass the necessary legislation with your help to implement it while having a review of the whole package. Hmm? Okay. Act immediately now. And right. I was told that if I dare make the suggestion again of joint action by our European friends and the Troika and the, Greek, the new Greek government, 
on, on, on specific issues before the comprehensive review is completed, this would be considered okay. casus belli by the Troika. They didn't care about the yeah, former base. They only cared about humiliating a government that had the, the audacity to say to them that their program over the previous five years was a spectacular failure, which it was. Yanis Varoufakis, one comment. What do you think you learned from all this? What do you take away? One sentence. What have you learned? For a small, fragile, relatively corrupt economy like Greece to rise up and demand the opportunity to reform when Paris and Berlin have not sorted out amongst themselves how they want to restructure the Eurozone is a very hard job. Thanks very much for being on Conflict, sir. Thank you. Thank you.